Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White. Today we're going to talk about bioorganic chemistry. We're going to talk about five different types of molecules. The first is fats and oils. Then we'll talk about simple sugars and compound sugars. We'll talk about carbohydrates and starches, which are polymers of sugars. We'll talk about proteins, which are polymers of amino acids. And finally, we'll talk about the ultimate polymer, uh, nucleic acids, which are deoxyribonucleic uh, acid and ribonucleic acid. Now, fats and oils are similar types of molecules, and each of them consists of a backbone of glycerol, which is a propane molecule with three OH groups on it. Uh, and that glycerol is bound to three molecules of fatty acids. A fatty acid is a long-chain hydrocarbon with a carb carboxylic acid end to it. And each of these bonds between the fatty acid and, and the glycerol is achieved by uh, binding an OH group to the acid group and eliminating water, a water molecule to make an ester bond. Um, and if you join three fatty acids to a single glycerol molecule, then you have uh, the molecule that's pictured at the top. And uh, if the chains are sh relatively short, then you'll probably have an oil, which has a lower melting point. And if they're long uh, or particularly well fit together, then uh, you'll have a fat, which is a solid. And the only difference between a fat and an oil is the, the melting point. Now, um, you've heard of saturated fats and unsaturated fats. Um, saturated fats are just long-chain long fatty acids, uh, which have no carbon-carbon double bonds. And unsaturated fats have one or more carbon-carbon uh, double bonds. And so uh, I've pictured here oleic acid. In its trans form, it forms a nearly straight uh, hydrocarbon chain, even though there's, there's a carbon-carbon double bond in it. Um, but if you have a cis configuration, then the uh, carbon hydrocarbon chain is going to have a kink to it. And uh, so uh, the unsaturated fats really come in different flavors and give different shapes to the molecule, which uh, affects its melting point, among other things. Uh, now, the conjugated bases, conjug the conjugate bases of fatty acids, that is to say the sodium salts of um, fatty acids, are used as soaps. And because these are long chain hydrocarbon molecules with a COO minus group bound, roughly speaking, to a sodium cation. And uh, so when you dissolve these soap molecules in water, what you end up with is one end of the molecule, which is ionic and interacts very favorably with water, and another uh, end of the molecule, which is hydrophobic or um, water repelling. And uh, that end of the molecule interacts favorably with greases, oils, and basically dirt. And so what happens in the action of soap is that uh, many soap molecules will interact with a dirt molecule, and the greasy ends, the hydrocarbon ends of the soap molecules, will wrap themselves around the, the uh, particle of soil or, or grease or dirt, and the sodium ends, the charged or polar ends of the molecule, will uh, interact with water. And therefore, it will solubilize this uh, dirt particle and create an emulsion where uh, water can now wash the dirt away. And, and that's how the uh, action of soap works. Detergent works in a similar way, except it's a synthetic molecule with one end which is hydro hydrophobic and the other which is polar or hydrophilic. Now sugars, uh, simple sugars, uh, are either monosaccharide, monosaccharides or disaccharides. Glucose and fructose are simple sugars, uh, not monosaccharides, which consist of uh, five or six-membered rings with one of the members of the ring being an oxygen atom, and then various uh, hydroxyl or um, methoxy uh, groups uh, hung off the, uh, the chain. Uh, sucrose is a disaccharide which is made uh, from glucose and fructose, one molecule each, and they're bound together in a glycosidic bond which is formed by eliminating a water molecule from two uh, OH groups. And glucose, in the monosaccharide, is the primary source of energy for living cells. Now starch and cellulose are both uh, polymers of glucose. And you can see that starch uh, here is formed by long chains of glucose molecules where the bond between glucose molecules is one where one of the carbon-oxygen bonds is axial to um, the uh, 
uh, carbon ring, and uh, the other bond is equatorial to, to the uh, uh, six-membered ring. Uh, in cellulose, you have a similar situation where you have polymers of glucose molecules, but both carbon-oxygen bonds in the linkage are equatorial to the ring, so slightly different geometry to the link. But that um, it makes an important difference because uh, animals have the enzymes in their bodies that are required to break down starch into glucose and use uh, that as a source of energy, whereas um, uh, uh, we do not have the enzymes to break down cellulose. So cellulose is an indigestible material. Cows actually uh, utilize the energy of cellulose, but only because they contain bacteria in their stomach, which have the enzymes to break down cellulose into uh, glucose, and then uh, the cow can actually process the glucose that it gets uh, for energy. Now, uh, proteins are polymers of amino acids. An amino acid is a small molecule that has an amine group on one end and an acid group on the other. And um, the head of one end combines with the tail of the other end. The carboxylic acid of one molecule joins with the amine group of another molecule to form a peptide bond uh, by eliminating water and joining the nitrogen atom directly to the carbon atom of the acid group. And uh, there are 21 naturally occurring amino acids, uh, and so these amino acids simply join with each other uh, head to tail, and it, you can make a, an astounding variety of proteins in this, um, in this general way. Uh, to this day, we have no idea all of the different proteins that are important in the human body, but most of the ones we know about are used as enzymes for muscle tissue, for um, structural tissue, uh, for proton pumps and ion pumps of various uh, uh, sizes and, and shapes and functions. And uh, the picture here is a cartoon of a uh, secondary structure of proteins that, that occurs when uh, the protein mo uh, molecule winds up in uh, what are called alpha helices, which then fold together into the structure of, in this case, myoglobin. Myoglobin is a molecule that carries oxygen in muscle tissue, and it performs a function that's very similar to hemoglobin, uh, which carries oxygen in blood. Myoglobin has 153 amino acids, which are uh, bound together, together in a linear chain with all sorts of different uh, substituents in these 21 naturally occurring amino acids. Nucleic acids, uh, there are two basic varieties, DNA and RNA. Uh, they contain the genetic code for production of proteins. A single DNA strand consists of a backbone polymer of uh, de deoxyribose, sugar, and phosphate connectors, and uh, each of the um, sugars is connected to a base. Uh, the base uh, can be one of four different bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, or cytosine, which are abbreviated A, T, G, and C. Uh, DNA comes in a uh, double-stranded variety uh, of complementary strands where every time there's an adenine molecule on one chain, there's a thymine or T group on the other chain. Uh, similarly, uh, every time there's a guanine on one chain, there's a cytosine or a C group on the other chain. And so these strands form very strong hydrogen bonds between the bases, and which keeps this double helix uh, in place. And uh, RNA uh, molecules can read this uh, chain and uh, therefore transcribe the code for producing uh, proteins. Each sequence of three bases is called a codon, and that codes for one of the 21 naturally occurring amino acids. So strings of these uh, codons, or groups of three bases, indicate the primary structure or the linear structure of protein. RNA molecules copy the genetic, genetic code from the DNA, which lies in the nucleus of cells, and carries it to the ribosomes, which are in the um, uh, cellular material outside the nucleus, uh, where uh, other types of RNA uh, synthesize the proteins from this uh, genetic code which has been copied by the RNA. Next time we will talk about kinet chemical kinetics, which involves the rates of chemical reactions and the reaction mechanisms of, of chemical reactions. We'll see you then.